afternoon, team. Good afternoon. Uh, we are team A. My teammates are Adrian, Vishnu, and myself, Chandra. We are uh, presenting Santos. It's a reconfigurable multimodal robot. Go to the next slide. The whole design of this project is based on the design and development of a reconfigurable multimodular robot, which is based on walking, crawling, and rolling. The modular design, uh, the modular design of the system is uh, based on independent set of components. These are of individual modules. Like uh, if we, we see the robot by itself, it's based on individual modules. Uh, it has got links, uh, the servos, uh, and uh, passive joints, which are very easy to assemble it together uh, for different various configurations. Uh, the one of the purpose of uh, using the modular concept is uh, we want to develop a system which is adaptable for uh, different environments to do multitasking. Uh, the advantages of uh, modular design is uh, it's cost efficient, it's more reliable, uh, it saves a lot of time of uh, development, uh, putting together and executing it. Uh, from there, Vishnu will take over to explain uh, the hardware part of it. Okay, this is, this is the basic hardware we used uh, to build the system. You see the servo there, the links. Uh, this is the ICD programmer, which you can you know, change your programming skills to either micro basic or micro C, depending on what you need. And this is the controller built by Adrian itself in lab. Uh, the links were pretty cheap, but the servos are pretty expensive. Uh, they were drawing in a lot of power, and for which this board did manage to live up to its potential. But uh, it's all heating up those regulators you see here. We probably need to plug in a little more, a few more at least, and uh, then we get them to work. The ICDU was comfortable. It, it basically uh, provides a, 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 a safety, you know, before executing any program. It, it actually um, first checks whether it, it compiles it, checks, and then only only the system's capable of executing it, it then uh, goes ahead and does it. Uh, so uh, compared to what we had two weeks earlier, and now is just uh, is basically the number of modules you see in here, but there is a limit to how many modules you're going to keep adding. So how do you optimize this? Um, we have we, we have actually seven seven servers on each link on each uh, let's say track seven. on either side. Seven uh, out of that one is uh, basically used for uh, latching or pro providing a locking mechanism for the roll joint, which is still under construction. We probably use magnets uh, on the last server for it to link this and then actuate it for the roll joint. Other than that. Uh, we probably settle for seven because uh, you, you decide to stop somewhere based on, we actually created a mathematical model for this. I mean, you actually create it, uh, you see an heptagon, okay? And you, you see that uh, each internal angle is given by 180 minus what? 2n minus 1 <laughs> by 4 into 90 or something. So based on that, okay, and, and you actuate the specifications, you, 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 you decide uh, the singularity, uh, the singularities in each joint, you know, the maximum and minimum extent what each link, each link can go to, and that would be it. Uh, as, as far as the number of modules go, we, we receive ourselves to seven there, so that even if it takes up into the walking mode configuration, it'll probably have three joints on each leg for quadruped walking, each acting as the hip, the knee, and the ankle. So, so we decide uh, seven modules be good enough in each link, and this is probably our final design which we're settling for. Oh, that's me. Oops. Uh, okay, the okay, Adrian will take over. All right, uh, make this quick. Uh, the programming was done in different ways. Um, we actually started, we didn't use a programmer that you guys used. We used a micro basic, which is the same basic language, but it doesn't have some of the nice little functions you guys have, so we had to create it. Uh, the main thing is, we created a pulse function that works similar to yours. You give it a port, you give it a pin and you give it a pulse that you want. The only difference is that you have to actually put in the pulse. It's a very limited amount of pulses. You can have like from two, 250 to 1250 is what you guys got, I think. Um, you can't, you have to actually assign, like for example, this would only work with two pulses that you can generate. Um, the code also had limitations to 
because of the servos. Um, each servo needs to be refreshed every <coughs> 20 milliseconds. So you're talking about 14 servos. Each one has a pulse width from 900 microseconds to 2100 microseconds, which is 2 milliseconds. So you're looking at already 26 milliseconds, or 28 milliseconds, which is more than your refresh rate. So you have to determine which ones need it and which ones don't. Like if um, you don't need to hold that position, then you don't need to send that signal. Um, a lot of those things were considered in our uh, programming. Uh, we did, this is the way we walked.